Ben and Ashley back again. We're doing another healing story. This time we have a very special guest, a, a very, very dear friend to us, Lynn Fouch, and she has cured uh, ALS using medical medium's information. Mm -hmm. Such a, a, a wonderful, inspiring story. Um, we've got Lynn here. Lynn, tell everybody hello. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Actually, I want to step back and say ALS slash MS because the doctors really don't know. And so okay. if you go to an ALS doctor, you'll get an ALS diagnosis. If you go to an MS doctor, you're going to get an MS diagnosis. And they're, they're so intertwined. There's so many levels and so many variations to this, to these conditions that people experience that, you know, so I would get that. Well, she's got more symptoms of this, but you know, it could be that. So it was more indicative of the symptoms with the um, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. And then of course, seven years later when finding Anthony William and him confirming that I had the three viruses that could possibly you know, well, it doesn't possibly, it actually does. You know, you mimic, or you actually have the symptoms and signs of what they call ALS. But again, it's a fancy Got word it. for what we know is to be inflammation of the brain with the three viruses and feeding off of the toxic heavy metals, alloy metals, and spewing off toxins, neurotoxins, and then that creates the nerves to become damaged. And then you got the symptoms of either, like I said, ALS or MS. I had to clarify so, that because it is true. They really don't know. Yeah. Very true. Very yeah. true. Um, Absolutely. And that was, at that point, you know, um, when I fell on the training run, training for the um, women's marathon for the Olympics, it was my last attempt because I was already now in my 40, early 40s. And time was of the essence. So I had that last attempt, and it was 2007. The games were 2008. And I, I really, up to 2008, I really saw a decrease in my level of fitness because I was showing more signs of the viral loads, but I didn't know that. And so when I fell in 2007, you know, and it took a while to actually, not a while, but like three months to actually finally go in and get the testing that I needed because I fought it. I didn't want to go in. I'm really like a warrior and stoic, right. and I, we can go into that later about why. And then having that diagnosis, not, you know, again, they don't know. So I, I don't want to say diagnosis, but they just said, well, this could be this and this could be this. But I just knew in my heart of hearts that it was something. I was praying when I had the fasciculations in my, my gastric muscles, in the back of the calf muscles. When I saw that, I, it's not that I freaked out, but it was like, oh my gosh, this is like one of the telltale signs of ALS. And I just was hoping and praying that it was MS over ALS. You know, I'm just like, okay. Because that's not so-called a death disease, so to speak. So when I went on that journey for seven years looking for answers, I moved from Colorado and into Oregon. And the only person, or the only thing that I went to, and I'll never forget it, I moved out there and I went to the forest and I hiked you know, at that point. And I just put my hands up in the air and I said, God, I just want to know the truth. I, I, I want to figure this out. Just bring on the truth here. And I just took out, I, didn't, I just started walking up the hill and, you know, not a stellar pace, but I was out in the forest and I just made that connection. And it took seven years. So I did a lot of things uh, that a lot of people have been attempting to figure out the illnesses. Like I would um, do the, uh, mod, all the like apple cider vinegar and the, I went to a holistic practitioner and they did the, the Lyme testing. Like, oh, this may, you can diagnose with Lyme and, and I did um, the electrical stimulation stuff. And um, I mean, I did a lot of things and blood draws, you name it, just to try to pinpoint what was, not blood draws, but just what, you know, then the IV therapy was another one that I did. And I actually, because of my background in medicine, I actually took that myself, that course. And I went down to like vitamin C, magnesium and B6. And I would actually do my own IV pushes. That was really an amazing, I felt really good with that. That was helpful, but I took the courses. So, and then um, it just, it, it, nothing really was solid. And I would, you know, then I, of course I had all my, my, my mercury removed out of my teeth and I had a lot of teeth issues. I had a lot of teeth pulling. I mean, it's sad for me to even listen to Anthony's 
podcast on the teeth because that was me all my life. All of my life. Mm. It wasn't just when I was in my 40s trying to heal from these symptoms of what they call ALS MS, right? So I was doing those things. So when my Olympic coach came to me and said to me, you know, you might want to take a look at medical medium information, I just threw my hands up in the air because at that point I kept going back and forth, back and forth. The times I thought I was going to bottom out. And I was really tanking at that point in 2014. When I was doing um, the mineral, strictly the mineral cell salts, I forgot about those. So it was Dr. Schuchler's 12 macro mineral uh, cell salts and how people could do like facial diagnosis with it. Because I noticed some changes when I would take like magnesium uh, phosphate and um, uh, potassium phosphate and potassium chloride, those, those ones homeopathically. So, and then I, my Olympic coach actually had a brother in Australia who knew a naturopathic doctor who actually made those macro minerals called active elements and he made the physical dose and the homeopathic in a non-lactose based pill. And I was so intrigued that I actually went over to Australia to, to meet up with him in person. And I attempted to get them over here in this country because they were so amazing and they were bound by organic chicory. So there was no lactose, plus you had the physical and the homeopathic dose, they were really great. So Interesting. I that too. And luckily, this is when I didn't even know medical medium when I got out, when I was flying back, I actually flew first class back. because I, I, They had a discount because they had room on the seats and I'm glad that happened because I remember walking through the airport thinking, oh God, I'm starting to bottom out here. One of those, you know, those moments where you're like, oh my God, am I gonna make it back to the United States? And I remember getting yeah. on the plane and I was, I could, so shaky and I couldn't really see anything. And then I, and I, so when you're in first class, they have bowls of fruit, right? So the whole time I was flying back, and for 20 some hours, I was like going through peaches like crazy, you know, and that kept me alive. I mean, it kept me with the glucose. <laughs> and I didn't have Anthony's stuff. I just knew I needed that. So I was like totally bringing in all that fruit. And it wasn't organic either, but I didn't care. It was like, I need this because right. I thought I was crashing. I'm like, just get me yeah. back to the States because I don't know if I'm going down or not. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, the, the angelic realm is watching over me, I guess. So, Very true. Most people yeah. would have freaked out and went, okay, call 911. I'm like, no, you can do this. Eat those peaches, eat those peaches. <laughs> Keep them going. <laughs> yeah. So, And I think that comes with, you know, when you train at a high level, when you're racing, you have to almost get in your mindset that, pain or the fear or whatever, you have to overcome it or overwrite it. Do I think that's a good thing? No, but it got me through some of the stuff that I had to endure. Because it, but you yeah. had gotten, you were dealing with the, the ALS symptoms in 2007, it sounds like. Yeah, but yes and no. The symptoms were coming well. Again, if people ask me when this started, I want to say in utero. Because as we know, there are four stages to the Epstein-Barr virus, right? Mm -hmm. So when I was in utero, when I came out, my mother had her gallbladder out. That's indicative of the, the liver, okay? Because the liver can't make the bile and, and store it in the gallbladder. And you know how the uh, bilirubin and the cholesterol and all the gunk or whatever gets heated in the liver and goes into the gallbladder and then you've got the stones and whatnot. Well, then I had a, col I was a very colicky baby. So that was huge, huge, huge liver. And then all of my baby life, I always had like ear infections and I had like a planter's ward on the bottom of my foot that I didn't tell my mom. It looked like cancer when I finally she saw it, you know. So I had these things. And then at the age of 14, 13 or 14, I had mononucleosis really bad. I, was, I lost like 35 pounds and I was hospitalized for three days. So that was, you know, the, the second stage. And then we think that it goes away, but no, it was actually still in my liver throughout my life, you know, I had other things going. And, and then in 2000, I had a prolonged QT interval. And that's a heart ailment where your heart won't fire at the end. And I actually had my heart briefly stop on me. I'm surprised, I was really lucky it didn't stop on me when I was training and racing and doing this high level thing. Yeah. So you see what I mean? It wasn't just 2007. And then in mm -hmm. 2000, when I had the heart thing, and then 2003, I was remember, and my husband had an appointment with a chiropractor, a holistic guy. He was down in Denver. And I would say, Dean, you know, it was just in passing because I would be in the appointment. And I'd say, you know, I'll be standing there and all of a sudden my leg will give out. You know, like the knee will drop. 
or you know, I just and I I didn't do it. Those were signs that there were some neurological issues coming. Do you see what I'm saying? So it wasn't really two thousand. It wasn't just two thousand seven. And then of course I had that. I was standing outside the REI in Denver, and it was really a hot day. And I just got, got done training. And I remember my eyesight. It just it's not a migraine, and it's not one of those. It's hard to explain, but it was very. Um, it, it was frightening. It in, but I, again, I went inside. I wasn't going to say anything because I thought, oh God, could this be a tumor? Because of my background in, in emergency medicine, I thought, wow, this could be a tumor, you know. And, but I just let it ride out, and it went away within 20 minutes. And so that was another sign. That I just attributed it to be high level training. It was warm. I didn't have a lot of um, stuff in my body for hydration. So I just didn't really think about it. And then um, after 2003, those things happened. Then from 2003 to 2007, I slowly was deteriorating. And I would do racing. Like I had gone to um, New Orleans to attempt to make the trials. And I was like sixth overall in the race. And I got up to second overall. And I probably could have won the race, but I couldn't do that last push. You know, I knew if my body was going to be pushed just a little bit more, I'd probably collapse. So I just, at that point, I knew something was off. And then 20, 2007 came and still was chugging, chugging along, but yet not as strong as I used to be. And that's when I was full on, you're dumb. Fell over, you know, and I got back up and it wasn't stellar. But uh, like I said, I just, I did get back up and I like kind of walk, ran back to my car. And ever since that time, then I had to hang up everything and really hmm go within and, and go on the journey. And that's what I did for seven so, years and then finally answer. So when you were, um, so you're done done with the Olympic trials and you get hit with, are you getting hit with, with more of these symptoms after after oh, that? Oh yeah, oh Which... yeah. Oh yeah, there are times I was, I'll never forget flying out to San Diego to go to my Agascu postural alignment because I was big into that too. And I would go out and do these seminars and whatnot, and I couldn't even get out of the hotel room. I was just, I was, I, I had to stay in bed. And I had a lot of gastrointestinal issues. I had neurological stuff. I had the pinging and the fixiculations, you know, and I had that thing in my head come and go, you know, once in a while, not frequently, but no, it was a rapid, you know, decline after that. Yeah. But again, you know, Still, go ahead. Would you? I was just going to say, in your background, you come from conventional medicine, yeah. right? Yep. Yep. I do come from so, conventional medicine, but I also, you know, we can go into that later. But I ask questions a lot. You know, I could see some things that I didn't fully comprehend why things were happening the way they were in medicine, and now that I am medical medium, like full on and never ever turning back, you know. Now I see what I was seeing, but I couldn't see what I saw back then in the 80s, in the 90s. And then, of course, when I had my son in um, 1995, I decided to, to stay home. And I'm glad I did, because that went, then I started taking the natural route. And it's very interesting. I even stopped doing some of the conventional treatments to my son at a very young age. And that was hard, because you know when you're married to an emergency physician, you know, and they're trained Western medicine, and you're coming up against what you believe and what they believe to be the best, you know. Even though in my heart of heart, I just knew something was not correct and something was had to change. Now I know why. So, mm -hmm. but I didn't fully know what I knew. Well, I didn't know what I knew back then. Right. So. But when you were dealing with these symptoms, like in San Diego, for example, you know, what was going through your mind? Where, where, where were you going for help? I wasn't going anywhere. I went within. I know. I know people go, how did you do this? I said, you know, in the love of God, you know, I guess it's me. That's who I have been. That all I, even my mom even said when I was little, you know, it took six doctors to hold me down to give me a penicillin shot because I had such bad um, like pneumonia or whatever. So I've just been this strong mentality and I just knew that, you know, oh, I did other things like the healing techniques, like, oh, this is your body is attacking itself because you created this, you know, the feelings buried alive, never die, and you name it, I did it. I did the tapping, I did the Qigong, actually Qigong, the medical Qigong um, 
it was uh, Master Chin Lin out of Minneapolis, um, for, uh, Spring Forest Qigong. I actually found some relief in that with the neurological stuff. It actually calmed me down at times, but it wasn't, it would not stay. But that was helpful for me. And I did the, um, what's that one? With the, I can't think of it right now. Um, but you say these things and you hold your hand on your head or whatever, and it's, it's um, I, I, it'll come to me later, but I did all of that stuff. So I was very into, and I thought, oh, all that buzzing and humming and stuff or whatever, there was something up, up there, like trying to download me into something that maybe that there was something that they were trying to tell me. And, uh, and I've heard Anthony talk about that too. And it, it wasn't, it was the, the neurological, you know, the neurotoxins affecting the nerves. So, yeah. So this so is me, you... I don't know why, I just didn't go into that fear space and would do all the other techniques and I just had a mindset where you're, you're gonna you're gonna look you're gonna get over this you know and it's interesting because I found a podcast on my um, computer from way back and, and Anthony did talk about that it's almost it's almost better for the person not to know that they have had been diagnosed with ALS and it's interesting because I have a woman that was um, sent to me through another practitioner and I'm just her friend, and I'm helping her with her mother who was diagnosed with ALS, full on, she's on a feeding tube, she can't get out of bed, and they haven't told her. So she doesn't even know the detrimental effects that this could potentially be, and she's making strides. So isn't that cool? That's yeah. great. That's great because it's like, you know, when you're, when you're told, when you're given a label, right, it's yeah. heartbreaking. Yeah. And, so and it, it, when they do diagnose you, they just, they, you, you, they can't do anything for you. So right. what was I going to do? Go back into a system that couldn't do anything for me? All I did is said, I need to get out of the mountains at high sea, or the, the high altitude and get to sea level because I knew that my body needed less stress. And I knew that anything over 7,000 feet was breaking your body down even more. So I was at 9,500 feet living up in the mountains. So that's why I did what I did. So hmm. now I can live it high altitude and it doesn't bother me because I know the truth and I'm feeding my body what it needs. So. How were you how were you eating prior to finding medical medium? What was your diet like? You know, being you know, when you train for the Olympics, you know, I was one that you just didn't put a lot of junk in your body. And I think that's what helped me because for one I grew up in a state with dairy, Wisconsin, and I hated milk. I really did. And they'd, they'd make you drink this warm milk at recess and be like, oh my God, I can just smell it today. So I always had an aversion to milk and cheese and dairy. I mean, it was there, but I just, and you know the fat issue? No one could tell me that fat was good for you. I'm like, fat is fat. That's how I really believed it. So that saved me too. And the egg thing, you know, I'm like, I mean, if you really think about it, eggs don't really smell good. They really don't. They kind of smell rotten a little bit. So I was yeah. a little big egg yeah. girl. And then also I didn't put a lot of, I, I didn't take like even birth control. I didn't do a lot of those pharmaceuticals at all. You know, occasionally, but oh, and I did try the antibiotics with the, when I first, you know, I thought, God, maybe I, an antibiotic would help. And I remember taking them for like a couple of days and I was like, this isn't helping. So I discarded those, you know, it's like, and I didn't have to go to the doctor because Rick's a doctor and he could, you know, prescribe. Just to, I said, just give me penicillin. Penicillin will maybe do it. And I remember it was not working. So I just, like I said, after two days, I'm like throwing this out. So I think that really helped me, you know, to, you know, come as fast as, or as far as I did. And I didn't have a lot of the detrimental things that other people do. So that's why I can't right. ever tell anyone, you know, well, what stage were you in? Well, I'm never, I would never do that anyway because then that puts in your mind that if I'm not there at that stage, then, and I haven't fully recovered, then this may not be working. So it's like, no, everyone has variables from what we're coming in ancestrally to what's going on with our bodies. So there you go. So. Everybody's got their own mix of toxins, yes. right? Yes. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And it sounds like the transition was easy for you switching your diet because very you simple. eating a lot of very simple. Anyway. I did everything, even olive oils, I would sparingly, very sparingly. And I think oh, the only wow, thing that yeah. I really put my in, in my body while training was wild salmon. You know, but other, okay. and I would really limit the 
turkey or the chicken or whatever and intake. No, I, I, I'll never eat animal well, pro, animal protein ever again. Now that I know, yeah. you know, because it's not just that it, it's not fueling the viruses, but the fat content in those foods will hide, you know, the viruses will hide in the fat and it will make your blood thick and stagnant as we know. So, but, you know, I'm not against anyone, you know, putting that in their body. It's just, you know, if you've got issues and you want your liver to be healed, you know, you've got to cut back. So, no, this is very easy for me. I was already, I love salads and fruits and vegetables and whatnot. And I didn't listen to, well, bananas and potatoes. You know, you kind of go, well, maybe I shouldn't eat those bananas because, yeah, maybe that is too much sugar. But yet I'd still eat a banana, but now I eat like six or seven or eight a day. You know, and then yeah, started this, I went through five pounds of potatoes a day. Because, I mean, I was emaciated. I mean, I really was. I, I dropped a lot of weight. Because I think I had one of those forms of Epstein Barr that goes after the adrenaline, too. So I was living on adrenaline. Um, a lot of adrenaline during the training 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 days. Yeah, I don't run anymore. I have no desire to run. And people would look at me like, oh my gosh, it doesn't mean that I'm not in shape and I keep my body healthy, but I now know that that's an adrenalizing thing. And once you get these metals out of you and you start to know who you are and feel so good, you just don't want to put any stress on your body. You know? Sometimes when I'm out in the forest, I really miss that running on the trails or whatnot, but I go out in the forest and hike now every day with my animals. And that's just... And that's so rewarding for me. Very methodical, very easy going, you know, and, yeah. and getting more muscle mass. So mm-hmm. and then I would never step in the gym ever again. So, and I could hang on that TRX for two, two, three hours. Never do that again. Oh my gosh. I know. Yep. Well, you didn't know those things back then, right? No, no, that's okay. And you know what? This has really been done to the universe and, know keeping us away from our connections and whatnot so but it's just a blessing now knowing who I am and what's to come and what's what I'm here for and I'll do my darndest to what I have to do for others and myself and family as long as they want it I'm not gonna push it on them as long as they want it so yeah Yeah. Yeah. I see the love and everything I I really do and I see the preciousness of the soul and even the ones that don't even know that you know they're precious yeah, thanks for doing this. I, I really hope that um, other souls on the, here that listen to this can really, it gives them strength and courage to know that the truth is, you know, what ALS and MS and all the other chronic mystery diseases are all about. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a diagnosis, right? It doesn't mm-hmm. really, yeah. it doesn't a really diagnosis change. of, well, what are you going to do with it? And how are you going to deal with it? And yes, I know you could go that route and we should people want to listen to the doctor that's great but if it's not working there's other options and there are other souls on this planet that have walked this journey and they're here to help you I'm, I'm one of them I, I love helping 